Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about fall leaves and some uses for them. We'd like to thank Ed Gorzinski for liking and sharing our podcast. You know what's interesting about chlorophyll? No. What? That, that, that in the fall, cold weather, it starts to break down in the leaves, and all that food and the sugars, it starts to move into the tree, and then there's a, a little membrane that, that generates, and it allows the leaf to fall off. Mm. And what's weird, too, is so there's all these different colors, like when the leaves turn colors in fall. Right, all, all the different colors? All those different colors are in the leaf, but because, because it's so full of chlorophyll that it, why it's green. It, it just looks green. Mm. And then as it breaks down, as the weather starts to cool, then you see the other colors that are there. Wow. Wild, huh? Totally. The leaves that are falling on your lawn, they contain nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, boron, iron, copper, zinc. Wow. Amazing, huh? Some research suggests that depending on how many leaves you get on your lawn, if you use a mulching lawnmower and grind these up and allow them to decompose in your lawn, mm -hmm. you can satisfy up to 50% of the nutrient need of the grass. Wow. Amazing, huh? Mm -hmm. So most pros say if you have a light covering of leaves, you can wait till it gets to about an inch thick before you go after it with a mulcher, which is pretty thick. But they say that that does a nice job because there's so much in there that it really grinds up. It needs to be dry when mm -hmm. you do this. And you don't want to leave full leaves on your lawn because it can contribute to snow mold, depending on the part of the country you're in. Mm -hmm. And a thick layer of leaves that aren't shredded can actually block air and, and moisture so it can it can damage your lawn. But if you're using a, a mulching lawnmower, this is a, just a very easy way to not only get rid of the leaves and you're mm -hmm. not putting them into the landfill, but you're adding nutrients to your soil. And what's wild is depending on you know the type of soil you have, if you have very sandy soil, year after year, if you're mulching up your leaves, it's going to give more body to that sandy soil and mm -hmm. it's going to allow it to hold more moisture and nutrients by the roots of your grass or depending on if you're using them in a landscape area. And then if you have a clay type of soil, those bits and particles from the leaves are going to loosen it up and allow the clay to be a little more porous. Hmm, interesting. Some people think that by mulching up these leaves that it actually adds to the thatch, but there's been a couple studies, one done by Michigan State University, saying that if you shred these they're leaves, wrong. they're wrong, you shred the leaves in your lawn, not only is it healthy for getting these nutrients into your lawn, but it feeds the microorganisms. And if you have healthy microorganisms and worms, it breaks down thatch. Mm -hmm. So it's actually going to help you get rid of thatch. So by... they're completely wrong. <laughs> right. So, so feeding the microorganisms is key to having very healthy soil. And an Iowa State University study what they found was that lawns where you're using a lot of chemical fertilizers, so th synthetic mm -hmm. fertilizers, it actually contributes to thatch buildup because it makes the roots and, and feeders very thick mm -hmm. and it doesn't allow air and water to flow into the soil as easily. If you're in an area where you have cool season grass, so it gets cold in the winter, mm -hmm. you want to keep your mower blades set around three inches tall and just keep mowing as long as the leaves are falling just keep going out there and just keep shredding this up because if you continually shred it, you're going to pick up other small particles and grind them even smaller. Right, so we, it has nothing to do with the grass growing. Exactly. We're just mulching these leaves. We want them as small as possible. And then in for warm season grass where you don't get a hard frost, you want to keep your mower blade about two inches, two and a half inches off the ground. If your lawn gets more than a couple inches worth of leaves, you can use them for landscape mulch, turn it into leaf mold, or add it to compost. Mm -hmm. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection estimates that in the fall, 60 to 80 percent of their landfill is from leaves. Wow, that's crazy. Amazing, huh? And you have all these nutrients, mm -hmm. plus you can use it, like I said, in your landscape beds rather than buying mulch. Right. Plus, you had to pick them up, put them in a bag. Right. <laughs> that seems like a lot more work. Exactly. Just mulching them up. Well, it's easy. So you can either use your lawn. So if you have a lawnmower that's a mulcher and it has a side bagger, you know, now you can, for the excess leaves, you can just mulch it and put it into the bag. 
And then some pros, what they recommend is go over your lawn first without the bag mm -hmm. and mulch them up and then throw the bag on and go over the lawn again and then you're cutting them even smaller and then it's all being sucked up into the bag. And then you can also use a blower with a, a vacuum and mulcher attachment. And then you're going to put that in your landscaping area? And you'd just like mulch, you'd want to keep it about three inches deep and about three inches away from the base of a tree or shrubs. Mm -hmm. And it looks nice. It's free, and it's something that you can keep adding every fall so you can maintain that look. Mm -hmm. And the microorganisms in the soil just love it. Worms, they come up to the surface, they grab these shredded leaves and drag them down. So you're aerating the, your landscape beds. And How many leaves are on a mature tree? I don't know. what You found that out. How many were there? 250,000. Fascinating, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah, that's wild. It's a lot of mulch. I was reading one article where they said that one full-grown tree with a lot of leaves can be worth up to $50 worth of fertilizer. Wow. So some of the top leaf blowers with a vacuum option, well, two that jumped out that are you know a fair price and rated very high, the Black & Decker Blower Vac Mulcher and the Toro Ultra Plus Blower Vac Mulcher. Mm -hmm were a couple that ran and they're easy to use they have an attachment where it sucks up through a tube all the leaves right. so so you can use the blower to blow the leaves into a pile mm -hmm. and then once you have that pile you flip it around and you use this tube to suck up the leaves it mulches it some will reduce it from 10 bags down to one mm -hmm. and some are 16 to one so just amazing how efficient they are well, if you're using it as a mulch, too, the like the Toro has a nice zipper on the bag. Yeah, yeah, very easy so, to use it as a shoulder uh, strap, mm -hmm. so you can kind of hold it, and then it unzips, and you can drop it exactly where you want it right. very easily. I forgot to tell you, the RoboHandle video we did, Right. so I took two leaf rakes, and I cut them down, and I used those RoboHandles on them, mm -hmm. and so I went to my next-door neighbor, and so she... it's like an attachment for your arm. Yeah, it's cool. It, it does a really nice job. You can really pick up leaves fast with this by mm -hmm. using two rakes. And so I had my neighbor use it. And so what the inventor did was he took a section of that video and he put it onto a TV commercial. <laughs> so, I, so I saw my neighbor on a TV commercial with that, a little piece of that video that we did. Wow. Funny, huh? So I got I to gotta let her know. <laughs> She's on TV now. But you can use, well, like those robo handles, you can use those for collecting leaves. There's something called the Giant Hands Leaf Collector. It's like a big plastic disc that right. you can scoop up leaves with. Gardex has leaf scoops mm -hmm. that you can use. So, it, so there's a lot of ways that you can scoop leaves up and, and get them up fast. And then if you don't have a blower or a mulching lawnmower and you want to buy something to grind them up, two top rated shredders one is from sun joe mm -hmm. and it's called the shredder joe it's a 16 to 1 shredder and then another top rated one that's a 30 to 1 shredder is flotron and that's the flotron leaf eater you're not going to spell it flotron f-l-o-w-t-r-o-n and sun joe is s-u-n-j-o-e thanks so you can use ground up leaves for mulch, which is nice. And then you sometimes see a term called leaf mold. Mm -hmm. And all this is is just partially decomposed leaves. So they use this as a mulch in gardens. So it's, it's a little healthier than just shredded leaves. And this is very popular in the UK. One method is just to rake up all your leaves. Uh, a lot of people will use a lawn sweeper so that it gets it up very quickly. And then you just store them in a pile for two to three years and nutrients they want you to actually throw a little bit of soil on this and the microorganisms in the soil will actually start to break down the leaves and it takes like three years to fully break so down you just have a pile of leaves in your yard yes a huge pile and it's going to and what does this do so it it create well they call it leaf mold and it becomes this dark brown crumbly material and so you use this as a soil amendment this is going to hold three to five times its weight in moisture. So rather than buying peat moss or anything, so you're just using your leaves around your house mm -hmm. rather than buying peat moss. It's two going to three years. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, in three years you, you have something. You, it regulates the temperature of the soil. It adds organic matter to gardens. And then it's great food for the microorganisms and worms. If you want to create leaf mold for next year, then all you do is shred the leaves. You pile them up, you get them wet with your hose. You don't want to saturate them, you want them damp, mm -hmm. and then throw a little bit of a soil on there, and it'll actually break down in a year if you shred them. 
So are you putting these in a container or anything? You can put them into like a wire bin. You can put them into, uh, some guys say they, they dig a trench and they fill it with leaves. And then after a couple of years, they have this dark brown leaf mold that they use as, as like a fertilizer. Hmm. And you can also use plastic bags. So there was one site where they said some of the best leaf mold that they created was filling plastic bags, so shredding them, filling plastic bags, wetting them down, throwing just a handful of soil in there, poking some holes in it, and then shaking it every couple of weeks so that it, you know, it moves the material around and gets a little so air in there. Time to go shake the leaf mold bags. <laughs> And they say it's going to improve the soil, the health of your garden, so flower gardens, vegetable gardens, you have something that you're you know, putting your leaves to work. So the most nutritious thing you can do with your leaves is to create a compost, and they've been composting for thousands of years. Did they do this in ancient Rome? Yes, in fact, Martius Portius Cato, mm-hmm. who lived from 234 to 149 BC, he was a Roman senator and historian, he wrote about creating compost for gardens. So using leaves and worms to create this compost. And in fact, compost was so valuable for creating good crops that Cleopatra in 50 BC made it a crime to remove earthworms from Egypt. Hmm. Wild, huh? She actually would put people to death who took large quantities of earthworms out of Egypt. Well, who wouldn't? (laughs) And then around the same time in China, we talked about Fang Sheng Chi Shu, Yes, everybody knows. He wrote about enriching the soil with cooked bones, manure, silkworm waste, and leaves to create a compost. I really feel like you've been neglecting ancient Egypt lately. (laughs) And then in the U.S., George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and George Washington Carver were all big composters. Is that a compliment? Yes. Our forefathers were environmentally forward-thinking. What names were they again? George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and George Washington Carver. Which those aren't all founding fathers. <laughs> that's how, I, just, that's how I see them. just three dudes. <laughs> so compost is the next step up in healthy material for your garden and lawn. It's a blend of leaves, grass clippings, food scraps, moisture, and microorganisms. And, you know, bugs. There's a lot of bugs in healthy compost. Is this why you like it? Yes, and adding compost every year to either your landscape area, your vegetable, your flower gardens, and your lawn is going to create very healthy soil, and it's going to produce much healthier plants because the microorganisms are breaking down any fertilizers in the soil. Mm -hmm. So to create compost, you need brown and green organic material. I've read a lot of different experts, and they really vary with their ratios. So some are saying that 25 to 1 is the ratio. Some will say 50-50. But the most common expert and the most common recommendation is three parts brown organic material. So leaves. So brown leaves and then one part green. Grass clippings. Right. But you can see, uh, you know, all these experts, you can see that you can screw up or you can vary. You don't have to be very precise to get a really great soil amendment. Why don't you better describe what's in compost? So you have your brown... You failed before. <laughs> you have your brown ingredients, which are leaves, corn cobs, newspaper, sawdust, and, and usually black and white newspaper, nothing shiny, nothing with glossy. So not magazines? No. Straw, branches, twigs, so it's high in carbon. And then your green organic material is high in nitrogen. This kind of gets everything going. Coffee grounds, they say, are excellent. Eggshells, grass clippings, feathers, hair, all your vegetable and food scraps from the table, which keeps that out of the landfill, flowers. And then you want to sprinkle a little bit of soil onto your pile because that's going to add the microorganisms to get the whole process going. So what do you mean sprinkle? So grab a few handfuls, or you can just take a shovel and shovel <laughs> some on there. I, I see. I, so like I, if you were cooking, it'd be like a pinch full of soil? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and then the pile needs some moisture. It, you don't want to soak it, so you want to get it damp, and it needs oxygen. So, you know, the, the key to not killing the bacteria as it starts this process is poking it once in a while or turning it, mixing it once in a while. And So uh, are you putting these in bags, too? I'm you can. To yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Shake. Shake the leaf mold bag and then shake the compost bag. (laughs) Exactly. Mm. A couple of things you don't want to use are black walnut leaves. It contains a natural herbicide. Isn't that Mm. wild? So like if if you're planting in your garden 
and you're using this, it, it won't allow the garden seeds to germinate. Whoops. You want to avoid eucalyptus. You don't want to put meat, bones, or fish in there. A lot of people recommend that, but I've heard, uh, you know, a lot of these articles I read say that it's it's amazing how raccoons and other pests mm -hmm. will just tear up your compost if you put, you know, meat and stuff in it. You don't want to put oil or grease in. And then anything that's diseased, any plants that are diseased, or anything that you're spraying with chemicals, you don't want to use in your compost pile. So when you're making your compost, you can really kind of create it anywhere. They have special composting bins that you can buy, so it mm -hmm. kind of keeps it neat and organized. You can just use a big wire cage, or just put it in a pile, like next to your garden. Or, like you said, with the bag, mm -hmm. you can do the same thing. The easiest way next to your garden is laying out twigs and branches on the bottom, and that's going to allow air to kind of come underneath it. You're going to pile up your brown material next, which is usually your shredded leaves. You're going to make that six to eight inches tall, and then you're going to throw your green material on top of that, throw some soil on it. A Just a sprinkle with soil. And, and some pros recommend throwing a little manure or organic fertilizer on it to mm -hmm. activate the decomposition. And then you want to spray it down so it's moist. You don't want to have it soaked, but it definitely needs to stay mo a little moist mm -hmm. every week. You want to move it around or mix it once a week in the mm -hmm. summer. Once it's winter, you only have to mix it about once a month. And then as this settles, you can put another grouping like this on top of it and keep building this pile. And you're just going to get this dark, crumbly material that you can use on your lawns and your gardens. And it's, it's just an amazing fertilizer, very healthy. So is healthy. this something that you're keeping covered, though? You don't have to cover it. Some people will cover it and poke holes in mm -hmm. it, but you need oxygen because the the fungus and the bacteria they, they've got to get oxygen so you, you don't want to but i mean are you worried because it's it can't be soaked you can but you know generally it's not going so you can make like a tent over it <laughs> i would say you don't need to cover it <laughs> make it easy for your lawn you can add about a half an inch worth once a year and rake it in lightly to your lawn and it's very healthy this stuff is like alive. There's a ton of bugs in there, worms, microorganisms, bacteria, fungus, and it's just really great organic material. You're going to have much better soil, and you're going to have a, a lot of nutrients. Like so, the, How often are you adding this to your garden? So you can use it once a season, like in the beginning of the season. You can add it as you need it. And mm -hmm. then like leaf mold, it's going to hold moisture. It's going to regulate soil temperature. It discourages weeds. And recent research says that the worms in this may actually eliminate pathogens in the soil. Plus, you're getting all the, you know, the waste from the worms. Very, very good fertilizer. So what does all that mean? It's good stuff. <laughs> What about burning leaves? So more and more communities are restricting it because of the danger of fire. Well, also, they burn really slow. Right, and, and because of that, they create so much smoke. The EPA did a, a, a study, and two or three families burning leaves in one area can create as much pollution as a factory, wow. which is pretty amazing. A couple animal studies suggest that the chemicals in burning leaves can cause cancer. Mm. And then anybody with, with breathing problems, you know, there's just so many particles in that smoke because the heat pulls up these tiny particles which can get lodged in your lung. They say it works almost like sandpaper Ouch. in your lungs. So you have all these nutrients, so put them in your lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? I think I said it all. <laughs> so either mulch it, create okay. a leaf mold, or compost. All of it is very healthy, easy. It's free. free and a lot less work than bagging it and sending it off to the landfill. Absolutely. Or burning it because you don't want to add to air pollution. <laughs> well said, JC. Well, thanks for adding. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can check out our book, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. And we're in the process of writing book two now. If you enjoyed book one, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can contact Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you be, 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 do you be
Ich habe 